Welcome to Contextual Electronics. My name is Chris Gamble. Today we're going to be going over importing a Eagle project into KiCad 5.1.6, which is my local version. They're up to 5.1.9, and hopefully 6.0 is on the way soon. We'll see how that goes, and we'll be previewing some of that soon. For now, though, let's go and import a Eagle project. So I'm going to import an Adafruit M4 Express PCB. This is a feather form factor. If you don't follow Adafruit at all, I really enjoy these uh, this form factor, and also uh, I like their work with... Circuit Python on the uh, SAMD51. This is a great, great project. Um, so we're going to go and clone this. So first thing I'm going to go is go and uh, clone, get the GitHub repo here, and then I'm going to. I'm in my. Uh, this is a Git bash. I'm going to say shift. Oops. I'm going to say actually let's. Uh, there we go. Let's do git clone, and then shift insert. So we're going to clone it in here. There we go. Now I'm going to go and uh, open KiCad. You see I have an empty empty project here. 5.1.6 is my version. And then I'm going to go import project, EagleCAD. And I'm going to go to my directory here. Uh, PCBs. Where are my PCBs folder? There we go. And in here. OK. Feather M4 Express. Now we're going to have to set the project destination, right? So we can uh, put it within this folder, or we could put it in a separate folder here. I'm going to actually create a new folder. Or we'll just call it uh, M4 KiCad. And we'll say select folder. And now it's going through, and it's actually pulling in all the different components here. And hopefully, it works. OK, let's look at some of the uh, details on some of this happening here. So it looks like there's a, a layer that is not able to be converted. So that's fine. Let's just make sure there's nothing crazy in here. I'm guessing it's just a, a drawing layer. There are quite a few errors on here, but it seems like it's all the same thing. OK, so we have what looks like the right stuff now. We'll take a look. Let's go and hit uh, Alt-3. That should open up our our 3D view here. And this is looking very similar. Now, it doesn't pull in any of the 3D models because none of that's there. So if you wanted that, you'd have to go and put that in yourself. But otherwise, let's go and compare it to the uh, photo here. That is all looking pretty good. Looks like we've lost some of the labels as well. So that might be the drawing layer. So you see reset, 3 volt, a ref, ground. So it looks like none of that is in here. But the real thing I wanted to point out is something that I have worked with, and, and this is the cautionary tale of all this, is how KiCad actually imports all this. Um, and I'm not a huge fan of it. <laughs> so you're looking at this. This all kind of looks like the schematic would look like in Eagle. OK, fine. Uh, but then we're going to actually look at some of the pin assign or sorry, the uh, yeah, the pin assignments here. And it looks like it's hooked into a flag. But what I don't like is that it's actually these tiny little uh, labels here. And so it's not so much the actual flag that's in here. It's actually the label. And this is where you really have to be careful. There's like these tiny, tiny little labels here. you know, And you can delete them. But then you actually might unhook some of the uh, connectivity. right? So that could end up messing you up here. Alternately, if you go and delete just the, if you think that you're deleting the uh, the flag, and then you go and hook this to something else, well, that tiny little label is still on there. This is all going to still be v vbat. So let's go undo what we just did there, and let's test this out. So pin 60 is not currently hooked up to anything. Um, and we can verify that. Uh, let's go to the layout here. So pin 60 on this part should be blank. Pin 60, not hooked up to anything. It's just got this just single single pin net here. So now, if I delete the flag, but then go and hook this into pin 60, I think that I have just a, a new connection here. But let's see, hit save. We'll go into the layout. We will 
re-import the layout here. And now you see that VBAT has been applied there. Even though you think you got rid of that flag, you have to be really careful about these tiny little hidden um, labels. So this is, this is definitely something to watch out for here. So anytime you're importing an Eagle schematic, you definitely, definitely have to do that. Now there was one other thing here. So this is meant to kind of look like Eagle. Um, so this is Eagle kind of doesn't have a uh, frame like Kaiked does. And, but if you want that frame back, what you can do is you can just go, and I believe you can just delete this, and now your frame is back. And so, you know, I would definitely, anytime you're importing someone else's project like this, you should always give attribution. I would definitely leave, you know, maybe say drawn by Adafruit initially, or, you know, the name of the file is Adafruit Feather M4 Express. You can leave that in there as well. But if you're going to go, uh, if you want the frame, that is how I usually do it. I just go and delete that, uh, that drawing file in here. So that was a custom page layout description file that's specific to the Eagle import, so it kind of looks like Eagle. If you delete that, you get the frame back. Another thing we could do here, so you know, one of the problems here is that all of these footprints are being imported as actual footprints here. You see this is actually a footprint library that got imported as well, so PQFN64. And really that's just done for continuity's sake because if you're, you know, Kaiket doesn't know how to map uh, a QFN that might be in the library here to whatever's being imported. So it just says, hey, whatever's coming in from the Eagle project, we're just going to put that into the KiCad project and it's good to go. If you want, you could try and go and pull in the QFN from KiCad, right? I don't want to show it, but so you see this is this is the actual library here. So and there's an exposed pad that's a little bit smaller. This might actually might be a little bit modified so there's more room internally here. So we could try and go and find a QFN in in the package uh, directory here, right? So we're looking for PQFN64. I think it's loading up here. Yeah. I don't think it's actually in. PQFN, I think, is specific maybe to the Atmel, but we're going to just try PQFN64 here. We'll say, uh, see, that's a much, much wider pad there with the 65th uh, pad, uh, 65th pad shown as well. So this might end up messing up the layout here if unless you go and modify that specific, you know, you could, we could go and modify this pad to be a similarly small pad in, internally so that pin 65 is like that. But again, I, I'm not sure I would do that in any of these cases just because I'm not sure I'd want to, uh, to mess with the original layout like that. And so it's just important to note that if you're, you know, if you're using... If you're importing a, Kai, a Eagle project into KiCad, it's going to pull all of the ones, even something as simple as a SOT 23-5, or what's um, oh, another good example here? I think even some of the, the yeah, 0603, 0805, like all of these are also getting imported as individual ones instead of a, you know a resistor. So let's actually maybe that's a, a good one we can go and switch out. That's a little bit lower lower risk here. So if we go and replace the uh, 0603, right? So this is an Adafruit specific library one. Maybe it has less silk screen. It has um, it has the the component silk screen, but it has less silk screen than maybe uh, the the equivalent KiCad package would have. So let's go into resistor SMD. So now if we do that, slightly different. But what we'll see here is that if we go and update the layout now. It shouldn't change too much. So we're just going to go and update here. You see, it didn't change too much other than the silk screen. But what I do expect to see is that we will have a 3D model now. So if you really wanted to, you could go in and start assigning or re switching out footprints for things like passives, and you could gain the the experience, <laughs> the uh, the benefit of the 3D models. But it's not necessarily something you want to do here. I and to verify here too, you see that they're basically. I think when uh, Lady Ada was uh, laying this out, she was using this smaller pad here so that she could route either ground or power, whatever these are. Uh, let's see, that's probably ground. I think it's to keep the. Oh, it's power. Okay, so it's to keep the uh, layer count down. So this is only a two-layer board as a result of that. And so that power distribution, that more space here, allows for better power distribution all the way around the part because the exposed pad is a little bit different. Also, you should note that the exposed pad, we sh in KiCad that's shown as a uh, pad 65, 
It's a little bit different in Eagle as well. They usually don't number their exposed pads. They give them a different name, and I think sometimes they're like an embedded, an embedded thing as well. So this is just uh, one of many different types of projects we could import here. Um, there's a lot of great hardware out there, uh, open source hardware specifically from the likes of Adafruit and SparkFun. A lot of them are made in Eagle, so it's really nice that you can import it now, if nothing else, to use it as a reference point. And I really appreciate all of the, uh, the companies that are sharing their hardware as open source hardware. It's really nice to see that, to see what they're doing to, to b benefit from their work. So I do recommend you support their, support their projects, support their companies, and uh, buy from them because they are helping share it to the community. If you have any other thoughts about importing Eagle or other watch watching out for points, uh, please do let us know down in the comments below. We'll have other videos here about KiCad. And if you don't know, Contextual Electronics is a program that teaches you all about hardware. You, we use KiCad on a regular basis, but we're really talking about how to build custom electronics on a daily basis. That's all for now. We'll see you in the next video.